You see, kids, the boy bunny has a thing called a penis, and he puts that into the girl bunny's vagina. The girl bunny then starts acting like she owns that penis. Anime dubs. Some consider them the greatest atrocity of the modern age. Others live by them and refuse to watch a subtitle anime even if you held them at gunpoint. Today, friends, let me be your guide into the world of anime dubs as we explore the best and the worst of what anime dubs have to offer. I know you're still alive, so you can quit playing me like a stupid kid. This is some kind of game. I'm sure as hell bored. Up first, we have the English dub of Yu Yu Hakusho. It's so wild to me, with the main reason being that it's genuine high quality while being made in an era that is synonymous with awful English voice work. Yu Yu Hakusho is considered by many today to be a boomer anime, which is fair because it certainly has many years on it at this point. But despite its age though, it's remained relevant year after year, and one of the contributing factors to how well it has aged in my book is its fantastic English dub and how well it has aged. While numerous VAs on the show deserve recognition, I love Chris Sabat's take on Kuwabara and Linda Young as Genkai was absolutely perfect casting. The heart and soul of the series for my mileage is Justin Cook's performance as the story's hero, Yusuke Urameshi. Justin brings so much life into this character that I almost can't imagine interacting with the series in any other way. I love manga, but one reason I've yet to read Yu Yu Hakusho is because I don't know if it'll hit the same without Justin at the helm as the homie Yusuke. He manifests a brash, overcompensating machismo of a teenage boy attempting to hide his true feelings so well. The way Justin delivers his lines is top notch, and I literally cannot bring myself to imagine another voice actor as Yusuke following the work he's put in. If you have never watched the series, you owe it to yourself to experience this classic and what it has to offer, and the dub in this case is a perfect way to do that. It just hit me. I don't know what I'm fighting for anymore. What? You insolent child! Well, show me what you got then. I want to see if you really had what it took to kill him. Next up, Samurai Shampoo. Samurai Shampoo is on my Mount Rushmore of anime. It oozes style and everything about its aesthetic jives with my own. I low-key think this series is responsible for the things that I think are cool to this day. Add on top of that Samurai Shampoo being the thing that introduced me to the godly beats of New Jabez, may he rest in peace, and it can't help but have a place in my heart. The dub of Samurai Shampoo works on many levels, but I think a major reason it feels so natural is that the series is defined aesthetically by hip hop culture. Hearing the characters speaking English along with the amazing atmospheric and lo-fi beats in the back just makes so much sense and feels like it couldn't have been made any other way. Steve Blum, Kirk Thornton, and Kerry Walgren all crushed their roles as Mugen, Gene, and Fu respectively. Their charisma and chemistry absolutely shines through their vocal performances and you will love each of them by the time the 26 episode series has reached its climax. Samurai Shampoo is a special series with a fantastic dub and absolutely deserves any accolades that it receives. Hey, are you one of those so-called badasses? Give me a drink, you little <laughs> Damn it. I wanted to forget all that shit. Next, we have Black Lagoon. The Black Lagoon dub is so godlike, it fills me with adrenaline and makes me laugh every time I watch the show. You can tell the English cast was having the time of their lives swearing up a storm in the studio. But unlike what is commonly the case where excessive swearing comes off as edgy or unnecessary in many shows, with Black Lagoon, it fits like a glove. The cast is made up of freelance mercs in an environment where they are taking on the world's nastiest criminals. So hearing them having colorful language makes total sense. The international nature of the show's cast lends itself well to English, with the manga even inferring that most of the characters speak in English throughout the series. Black Lagoon is great, Revy's my wife, and you should go watch this show if you haven't already. It's completely worth it. Jesus, maybe that mouthy little twit was right after all. You've totally changed. Rock, you've spent too much time in Rowanapur. That shithole of a city has messed with your head. You see, kids, the boy bunny has a thing called a penis, and he puts that into the girl bunny's vagina. The girl bunny then starts acting like she owns that penis. Finally, we have Ghost Stories. The Ghost Stories dub is just built different. To be real with you, I didn't know whether to put this on the best or the worst list. But before I go into the Ghost Stories dub, let me give you an honorable mention in the form of the Cowboy Bebop dub. It was originally going to take this spot, but I feel most people already know Bebop's quality, so I wanted to put some of you on the Ghost Stories since I don't think it's as widely known and it's absolutely worth talking about. So this dub is arguably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever watched. The humor found in it is an absolute no-fly 
Twilight Zone in today's day and age, but if I'm being real, that's exactly what makes it so hilarious and special. See, the Ghost Stories anime has an absolute case of joke dubitis. Those that are familiar with how four kids handle most of their IPs are very familiar with this phenomena. In a lot of cases, this means an absolute butchering of the source material and an overall product that is objectively inferior to the original. But in the case of Ghost Stories, something special happened. Rather than becoming a ham-fisted mess where the writer tried to shoehorn the premise into a funnel and make a kid-friendly bundle of garbage out of it, the director and the team of Ghost Stories went ham on the script, turned it into one of the anime's most comedic projects to date. It is no holds barred, it makes jokes about characters' physical appearance, race, weight, physical and mental disabilities. Every time I watch, I come away shocked but laughing hysterically. I genuinely can't say whether Ghost Stories dub is great or awful, which makes it the perfect buffer into the second half of this video, where we'll discuss a few of what are considered some of the worst anime dubs out there. Hey, you remember a couple episodes ago you promised me some panties if we went in that house? Well, I'm still waiting for him and I'm not getting any younger. <gasps> hey, watch where you go. Carol! You alright? It's us, pal. Please, say something. I knew you'd return. Thank you. And up first on the worst list, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! It's time to do 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 it is considered by many the apex predator of bad dubs due to the sheer amount of episodes and series within the franchise it has been perceived as ruining. Yu-Gi-Oh has absolutely earned a spot on this list. It's lambasted for a variety of reasons, but the primary complaints from lovers of the series are its perceptions of having ruined the series to a western audience by being played much more juvenile and child oriented than its Japanese counterpart. I won't lie, I grew up with this thing so I have some pretty strong nostalgia goggles when it comes to looking back on the series. The changes to the tone of the story and script to appeal to a younger audience couldn't be more clear, but there are some sincerely hilarious moments to be found in the Yu-Gi-Oh dub, with Kaiba's voice actor in particular having a few one-liners and line deliveries that absolutely sent my sides into orbit. The dub also has a weird habit of arbitrarily giving characters extremely strong accents, despite them being from the same locations as their peers, and I have no clue why. Joey Wheeler's strong-ass Brooklyn accent is always a standout, and while I'll never truly understand the choice and artistic direction to do this, I respect the boldness and the Commitment. Some like me have grown to enjoy the dub's outrageousness, but many will never forgive the English dub and for Yu-Gi-Oh! Pierce, I'd be lying if I said I couldn't see why. The Magic Card Monster Reborn, and now, I shall resurrect Slifer the Sky Dragon! Yes, the infamous 4Kids dub of One Piece. At this point, this bad boy has reached legendary levels of bad dub stardom. Are you really leaving us, Trace? Are you? Yeah. Clearly, Blackbeard isn't here in Alabasta, and I really need to find the guy. Okay. I remember watching this series as a young lad and thinking it was so cool just to see a show like One Piece on the air because at the time, if you were an anime fan, options were very limited on western television. But it did not take me long to realize that something wasn't right with the four kids One Piece dub. Censorship ran rampant throughout every aspect of the show's dialogue and imagery. I remember one scene in particular where Smoker was introduced and instead of having his signature cigar sitting in his mouth, instead his mouth remained ajar and slightly slack jawed as Smoke slowly eased his way out of his miserable gullet. I also distinctly remember Sanji having a sucker in his mouth which for some hilarious reason had Smoke coming out the other end because 4Kids was deathly afraid of any depictions of smoking in the series lest they doom the entire generation of naive young anime fans to an early grave. Even without the censorship complaints though, the One Piece for kids dub was a dumpster fire. One of the primary issues was that the company very much lived up to its namesake and treated the property like it was made for 6 to 10 year olds, despite that not being the target audience for many of the properties that it received. Dialogue and many significant moments of story beats were drastically altered to fit with the childish tone they sought to marry the series with, and a weird 4 kids ism that rears his ugly head yet again are the strange accents. You got an Australian shank, Southern Bell Robin, Sanji is from Brooklyn, maybe probably he probably knows joey wheeler what i'll say is that it can be one of those things that's so bad it's good if you watch it with the right sensibilities but to be real on the whole it just kind of hurts hey thousands of people are about to fight each other and we've got to help them out it's all from vivi hey i'm warning you kid you'd better do what he says this guy's a real psycho once he gets pissed off with you 
Fuck you. The Devil Man OVA. Oh, now that one is a classic 90s bad anime dubbing at its finest. While the dub is absolutely not great, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a soft spot for it. Some of the actors are way overselling their lines, while Ryo and many others couldn't be more wooden in their delivery if they were actual puppets. There are blatant changes to the original script all over the place, gratuitous overuse of curse words in an effort to make the tone more dark and mature, and it's overall absolutely ridiculous, but it makes me smile. The Devil Man dub all but destroys the brooding tone of the story, so for those looking to experience Devil Man in its purest form, I absolutely can't recommend this. But for those whom have already watched the OVA subbed or you're familiar with the Devil Man franchise and just want some entertainment, the Devil Man dub might have something to offer you in that case. And what have you got that knife for? Because I'm in terrible danger. But you could easily hurt someone. That's the idea. Shiratori, this must be the place where Yamato Takeru no Mikoto came down from the sky. What? What the heck is this now? Ah! Finally, it's Garcy's wing. Now this right here is royalty in bad English dub territory. If you haven't seen the Garcy's wing dub, please, after you finish this video, just stay on YouTube and look up a highlight clip of the dub if you don't have the time to watch the full anime. If it doesn't get a laugh out of you, then you do not have a pulse. The Garcy's wing dub feels like you are watching overzealous community theater actors and their unwilling family members whom they drag into the studio, line reading from a script created by an AI who was asked to create an anime over a script if it was written by Tommy Wiseau. It is almost incomprehensible in its ridiculousness. I have never watched the sub version of Garcy's Wing and have no intention on ever doing so because the dub is too much of a treasure to go ignored. Some things are legendary for a reason and Garcy's Wing has absolutely earned its place in history. Don't just take my word for it. Go do yourself a favor and check it out. You will not be disappointed. And there you have it folks, some of the best and worst of English dubs. If this is something you'd like to see more of, definitely let me know in the comments let me know of some that you may have put on the list either on the best or the worst and thank you guys for your time i'll talk to you again in the next video